We hope these videos do well to get you started and for a review. Entering the laboratory. All personal belongings like coats and backpacks are to remain in the hallway. Valuables such as laptops, cell phones, and purses can be kept in the microscope cabinet at your station. Be sure to wash your hands well with soap and water at the start of every laboratory. After drying your hands with paper towel, be sure to use the same paper towel to turn off the nozzles to avoid recontaminating your hands. Choose a pair of disposable gloves that are tight-fitting to your hands and are not baggy. If at any time they become damaged or contaminated by spilled culture, dispose of them in the biohazardous waste, wash your hands, and don a new pair. To prepare your lab bench, locate the 70% ethanol bottle in the blue bin at your bench alongside the distilled water bottle. Gently spray over the surface of the bench top and wipe it clean with a small amount of paper towel. Dispose of this paper towel in the biohazard bag on your bench. This area is where you'll be working with various microorganisms and is to be kept clear of papers and personal items. Keep your lab manual or current protocol to either side of this workspace. Every group has an assigned drawer labeled with a course code and a group number. Use only the items from your group's drawer unless otherwise specified by the TA. Microscopes can be found in the cabinet at your station. Once plugged in, the on-off switch will increase the light intensity of the bulb of the microscope. The higher the magnification you're using, the more light you need. As you begin to find things with your microscope, start with the lowest power and work your way up as needed. Above the light, you'll find that there is a condenser. This restricts the diameter of the light beam that is shown to the objective lenses. So start low with the lower power objectives and increase as you increase magnification. In order to change the magnification, you simply rotate the objective lenses as shown here. The red corresponds to the 4 times magnification, the yellow is the 10 times, the blue is the 40, and the white is the 100 times magnification. You always want to begin with the lowest power objective lens, focus, and then rotate without adjusting the stage. In order to bring specimens into focus, you need to locate the coarse adjustment and fine adjustment knobs on your microscope, which are seen here. The innermost knob is the coarse adjustment knob, the outermost is the fine adjustment knob. More difficult to see on this side, but if you look to the other side of your microscope, this becomes more apparent. So the larger part is the coarse adjustment, the outermost part is the fine adjustment. You'll become familiar with several types of media in the laboratory the majority of which will be a solid form of agar, which can be in test tubes as shown here or in petri dishes that have about 1 to 1.5% 1 agar added to make them solid. There are semi-solid found here which have a lower percentage of agar added. And then there exists broth cultures that have no agar in them, so they're simply liquid. Inoculations of these types of media will be in a subsequent video. Follow these instructions when preparing to exit the lab. Make sure you leave it how you found it, so return all items to your drawer. Wipe the bench top down with 70% ethanol, dispose of your gloves into the biohazard bag, wash your hands before you leave, and don't forget to collect your personal belongings. Aseptic technique requires the use of a Bunsen burner. In order to start, attach your Bunsen burner to the blue valve that says gas. Make sure it's not attached to the orange one that says air. Rotating the nozzle parallel to the hose turns the gas on. Making sure it's perpendicular, the gas is off. At the base of your Bunsen burner you can see these windows. Closing them ensures that less air is forced through and allows you to more easily ignite your Bunsen burner. Locate the striker found in your 2P98 drawer. Make sure that the flint is still intact and you see sparks when you draw across. If you do not see this little piece of black metal, known as flint, ask your TAs for a replacement. Holding the striker in an upside down way so it looks like a hat, you're going to ignite your Bunsen burner. Turn on the gas and simply strike it and it will ignite your Bunsen burner. Adjust the windows again so that your flame is only blue and not orange. You should be able to visualize two different cones, an inner cone and an outer cone when you have properly set your Bunsen burner. So if you see here, the inner cone is the hottest part of the flame, the outer cone is not as hot for sterilization. Working near the flame is key to having aseptic technique. The zone of sterility created by the Bunsen burner flame is not a very large area and is only maintained by having this steady flame. 
Work slowly and meticulously, and only open sterile items within this zone for a limited amount of time, and only when they are immediately needed. Sterilization of your inoculation tools is required before and after each use. We use both an inoculation loop, seen here, and an inoculation needle, seen here. Begin by holding your loop at a downward angle and placing it at the tip of the inner blue cone. Work your way backwards from the handle all the way up to the tip, allowing the wire to get red hot. Notice if we go lower, the wire does not get hot nearly as quickly because this area is not nearly as hot as the inner cone tip. Working your way backwards from the handle all the way up to the tip of the loop prevents aerosolized forms of contaminants that may land on yourself, others, the environment, or contaminate your work. The first step in the staining procedure is to make a slide culture. In order to do this, take out your staining tray with the insertable rack, place it on your bench top. Locate the box of the clean glass slides, as well as a box of cover slips. Tweezers will be used to manipulate the slide during the staining procedure. Place a clean glass slide on top of the rack inside of your tray. We will be showing you how to make a slide culture from a liquid broth culture. In order to do this, you'll need your loop. Ensure that you sterilize your loop prior to use by starting at the end of the wire that's closest to the handle and working your way up. The liquid broth culture has been sitting on the bench top and the cells inside tend to settle, so you'll need to vortex it to completely mix, ensuring that your one finger is over top so that nothing spills. Grip the test tube lid in one hand using your pinky finger and briefly pass the tube through the flame to sterilize the air prior to taking a loop full of culture. Sterilize before placing back in the rack. Now gently smear this loop full of culture on top of the glass slide in order to spread it out to air dry quickly as well as for easy viewing under the microscope. Sterilize your loop starting at the handle end, working your way up to the tip prior to putting back on the bench top. Your slide will need to completely air dry before the staining procedure, so set it aside until then. In order to create a slide culture from an agar plate instead of a liquid broth culture, we need to first add a drop of sterile distilled water to a new clean slide. For sterilizing the loop, we again sterilize the opening of now the sterile distilled water test tube prior to taking a loop full of water. We are careful not to touch the inside of the tube when we do so. We gently place this droplet of water to the center of a sterile slide. We then re-sterilize our loop and open the petri dish containing our bacterial culture very gently. Once the loop is cool, we gently touch the bacterial culture, taking just enough for visualizing under the microscope. You should not see a large amount on your loop. Spread this around on top of the slide in the distilled water and re-sterilize your loop prior to placing back on the bench top. Heat fixing is a process required by many staining procedures. We take our slide culture that we had prepared earlier, and once it is completely air dried, it is now considered our bacterial smear. In order to be stained, it first has to be adhered to the slide, and we achieve this by heat fixing. We'll place the glass slide back into our staining tray and grip it with the tweezers so we do not burn our fingers during this process. Grip the glass slide carefully with the tweezers and pass through the flame quickly three to four times. The bacteria have essentially now melted to the glass slide and will not be washed off during the staining procedure. When following your staining procedure, it may request that you flood the slide with stain. All that is required is that you completely cover the bacterial smear with stain. Stain and other parts of the slide are really just excess waste. When preparing to rinse your slide, grip your slide with the tweezers and hold at an angle to avoid getting staining on your gloves. Use your distilled water bottle to rinse the slide clean until the stream of water is running clear. Before you're able to view this under a microscope, the slide must be dried either with a Kim wipe or by air and place a cover slip over your smear.